Hello and welcome back. And that's right, I'm still here in Taipei, all in and around Computex, looking at all the different kinds of technology. And although we're going to be frittering through all the different hardware and software releases over the course of the next week, week and a half, there is so much to unpack. Today, I attended the Synology event. There's Synology kind of partner, but open event that's going to be running the whole week at the same time as Computex. So if you are attending the event, do check it out. It's like one stop away on the Metro, and they've got a lot of stuff there for you to see. Now, there's a lot that I could talk about that was at that event I was looking at there and again they had pretty much all of the current generation hardware there they even had uh, that Synology new B drive and they had um, Synology's new range of plus series hard drives more on that in the next 24 to 48 hours however today I want to talk about something that really stood out and that this is something they are developing in the background that is very very early days at the moment and I was lucky enough to actually get to have a play around with it I'm talking about uh, an integration of AI into uh, a few of their premium services. Now, AI is kind of the buzzword, let's be honest. Probably 99% of you watching this already know about chat, GPT, and stuff like that, and you know how it's being integrated into content creation, integrated into businesses to kind of make things easier, and unfortunately, in some cases, being abused. Now, it was always going to be a question of when Synology were going to integrate AI in this fashion into their build. We've already seen Microsoft doing stuff with it as well as Google and, and, and more. And although they've already integrated AI services and support into things like surveillance and photo recognition, this is the first more formative steps we've seen them utilizing it within their business capacity within their ecosystem. And I was lucky enough to see them demonstrate it in a couple of different ways. Now, just before I start going through what we learned about this during their demonstration, it's worth highlighting, they were very keen to highlight this as well, ignore that phone, that this is still barely even alpha at the moment of how it's going to be integrated they're really kind of exploring the capabilities within their own ecosystem and how to use this and when the, in this demonstration they showed how it was integrated into Synology's mail plus platform and also into Synology office I would argue there are a lot more of the mail application as well but for now let's make our way in and as you can see this is a standard um, Synology mail window there where you're going back and forth with your emails with a the client there and this gave you the ability to utilize pre-existing formulae um, to uh, you know refer to in uh, an email response and then it would generate that AI uh, the AI would generate that response for you now it's worth highlighting that if you have a long-running email communication back and forth, it will use contextual information from within that exchange that you've already got stored in your email server there to create a better formed response. Now, that reply can be modified in a number of different ways. It can have its tone changed, uh, and also the subject matter can change. But if you look at the tones, you can change, change things to make them longer or shorter. And as you can see there, it's now using the AI, much like ChatGDP has that capability to do, to reshape your response into a longer version than was previous now you can put some straightforward bullet points into that and then utilize the AI to turn those bullet points into a formative sentence and as mentioned with the tone there's lots of different ways in which you can have that information relayed and interpreted within the context of Synology's mail plus application there there's even um, support for uh, multilingual utilization from within uh, Synology's own AI integration with the AI writer here now they did highlight that this was utilizing at the moment um, utilizing a is built in a third-party API and they're hoping that that will not be the case long term but at the moment it's allowing them to explore this a great in a greater degree of detail and as you can see if you look at the informal back and forth whether you're utilizing an existing new email and you're using contextual information of an existing user or you're going to be utilizing that existing email thread it's nice to have it and of course the ability to change into different languages based on the people you are talking to on the fly is always going to be useful yes you could have just opened up google translate but it's still nice to have that there while it's generating a multilingual version of your emails to, uh, better suited to the destination audience there it's also worth touching on while I'm going through this, if you look at the top as they go through the different options, we are currently running off a local IP during this. And that local IP there at the top, that local IP doesn't guarantee that this is still not using external AI services there. That of course means that even though we're accessing the NAS local, that NAS almost certainly has got some kind of remote AI service being uh, integrated into it here. So whether this is taking advantage of chat tdp or existing ai services from the likes of microsoft and more 
they unfortunately were not able to confirm that um, you know during this demonstration for me here um, but I do like what this can mean and then if you move into the Synology Office application much like a lot of us that have used chat GPT you can see a new use AI option has now appeared here and again this is still early days in its presentation giving you the ability to revise it make it stronger longer, uh, shorter longer summarize the content as well always going to be helpful change the format and more now this you know integration of AI is not new as mentioned earlier on when it comes to the utilization of AI it's been you know, used to death and it's currently the buzzword how you can use Skype and it will have an AI thrown in there. But it's the idea of having access to this sort of thing natively within your Synology NAS, to what extent it you know, includes remote access and how much of that data is being used, who knows. But still, it, this could be a very, very convenient way in order to take advantage of AI assistance and particularly those uh, options for reframing and rephrasing your con uh, the context of your information as well as better shaping it for better destination uses is always going to be appealing. Now, again, this is incredibly early days. We still don't have a great deal of information beyond what you've seen here on screen, and they are still doing demonstrations at their partner event right now, just outside of Computex. So if you are in Taiwan, I strongly recommend, uh, if you're in Taipei, sorry, to just head over and check it out. Because although there is a lot of different kinds of hardware and demonstration of their solutions uh, at their um, presentation there, this really did stand out for me as a very, very intriguing premise. And just a very Synology way of approaching this. But again, it's going to be interesting to see how they integrate this. And is this looking like it's going to be maybe a DSM 7.3 thing? Is it going to be an individual application um, update later in the year? And moreover, just how far will they extend these services into other partner applications within the collaboration suite? But this has been um, AI integration on Synology DSM and some of its applications moving forward. How do you feel about this? Good, bad? Do you think Synology is doing the right thing pursuing this or not? Let me know in the comments. We're gonna do loads more videos. You've probably seen a bunch of shorts that I've been doing just for convenience. There's gonna be a lot more videos coming very, very soon on lots of the things that we saw at Computex. So do stay tuned for that. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.